like an interview, I just thought, and I thought I'd just have a courtesy call, but what it is, that's the way they say, uh, well, that often we, don't, we get to make somebody so distinguished. Exactly. So, uh, I'm privileged to be able to share with you. Um, well, Johnson, they met uh, two weeks or so ago, and he indicated that he has some distinguished visitors in town, if I'll be able to. This is a difficult day. We have March. I'm supposed to be on a plane to Cat Island, but that is gone. Um, but I have a your vice president, is, your vice president is meeting me on Thursday of next week, and I've invited a number of the leaders of the Caribbean to join me. And they decided they want to have a call with me at three o'clock. So, if I have to break away, even if we have to come back, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. But well, welcome to the Bahamas. <laughs> hey, thank you for having us. Thank you. Yes, love the island. Love it. We're trying to do great things here, but we do need assistance. <laughs> we, we noticed that um, there are a, lot, a number of churches, okay, but the, there's a problem here, like many of places where people have been scattered at, uh, in terms of crime, uh, things of that nature. And our organization, we teach the truth according to the Bible. We don't teach uh, colonization, colonialism, what we teach is that our people that went on slave ships and were scattered are the Israelites of the Holy Bible. That's what we teach. So I definitely wanted to... Yeah, this, to uh, this is the permanent secretary. In my hey, how are you, sir? Perhaps what you could, you could do is just tell me a bit about the... Uh, your denomination, if I could call it. That. Yes. Sir. You, uh, well, it's not a... Or oh, your movement. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well... I like to reference the Bible first and foremost. Okay. Hey, can I, can you read for me, please? Cause you know, I can't, my, I don't have my glasses. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. I want to start there because I want everyone to understand that we are a Bible based organization. Everything we speak on, teach on comes from the book. Okay. Read that for me. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments and the statues which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, which is, as you know, on the continent of Africa, he gave the Israelites a warning, the 12 tribes, if you break God's commandments, these are the curses that will come upon you. Now to get to the point, verse 68, please. Book of Deuteronomy 28, the 68th verse. And it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into us, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, with ships. Egypt means bondage. You will go into bondage again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Once you got off the ships, you would be sold to your enemies. Now, just based on that alone, when we examine world history, okay, our history, that applies to us. Okay, we were the ones who were sold, who were on slave ships and were sold. Okay. This is something churches, they'll read it and have been taught because many of our, the elders, they went to theology school. They're taught not to teach that. Okay. Teach another doctrine of everyone is the same, but the Bible says we're the Israelites. So that's what we teach. The Bible describes Jesus Christ looking at as you and I, Revelation 1, 14, 15. We don't got to read it. You familiar with it? What does it say? Go and get it for him. Go and get it. <laughs> Revelation 1, 14, if just it gives you a description of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you how it helps our people. Go ahead. Revelation 1, 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool is a texture. He has white wool hair. They're just like you. Go ahead. As white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. He drank wine in moderation. And his feet. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. As if they burned in a furnace. You take anything and you burn in the furnace, it gets black. It describes Jesus Christ. We have never been taught that in church, school, s history. No one teaches that. Every, I say, you see a blonde hair, blue eyed, pink skinned Jesus. And I say, where is that in the Bible? No one has an answer. But it, you know what it does? It causes uh, low self-esteem, self-hate. That's what it does, okay? Um, it does not uplift our people at all. So what this does when we bring out the truth, people are so shocked, even today at the parade. 
people are shocked at what they heard. What? Jesus? Black? What? We're Israelites? Never heard it. It could revolutionize, revolutionize, what's the word? Revolutionize every island, every city, every state, every continent where our people are scattered. Okay, many, some of our brothers just came from India where our people went into slavery in India. The CDs. Some of our people never heard of that. You say, ever heard of CDs? No, because we are a forgotten people. But Christ said, go into all nations and teach the gospel. Why? Because we were scattered into all nations, divided through political means, of religious means, economic means. Now, this, the Bible is a unifying force to bring our people back together with one mind, one understanding that we are God's people. OK, and that's never been taught. So this is what we do. We went, went to Cuba. Well, we got arrested because you need to be, uh, what does they say? To tell us we needed a sponsor in Cuba because they said it's illegal to teach without sponsorship. Okay. We're in Ghana where we are currently building a facility. Uh, we'd like to build one here, uh, here, uh, in the Bahamas. Um, we go from, we have over 50 congregations. Okay. And, uh, the Bahamas is growing, it's up and coming. We have Dominica, we have, uh, was it Turks Island? Uh, we have Haiti, we have uh, Santo Domingo, uh, various places. And, and our people, wherever they are, are shocked that what we, the few things I've read to you, that is even in the Bible. And you've been to church all their lives, all their lives, never heard he. Okay. So it, it means a great deal to us to be here in the Bahamas and we see the crime rate is on the rise and we can fix that with the word of the most high, of course, not through our power, but by God's power, the word of God. We, the Bible changes gang, gang uh, bangers or drug dealers from what they are now to who they can be or aspire to be according to the Bible, the Israelites. And that's what we've changed uh, whores into wives and mothers, okay? And this is what we do from Island to island, state to state, country to country. This is our mission of Earth Life with Hands out team. Okay. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, um, I understand the power of the Bible. And um, I very often refer, refer to it as the oldest manual. Hmm. When you, if you buy, a cell phone, it's like a car. Yeah. Any apparatus you buy, they all have this. Yes, the phone is bad you are. Yes. Oh, uh, what does it do? This teaches you about that apparatus, tells you yeah. how to turn it on, how to fix anything goes wrong, whatever in your life. I think we all come to this world with an oldest panel. I call it the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I, I truly believe, as its acronym speaks to, it's the best instruction before leaving Earth. And, and I, I live by that. And so, um, and we all, um, we are called upon to have discerning spirits, have to be able to discern interpret for yourself at times. And very often if it, it's in the hands of others, and um, I think we, because of our history, and have some innate um, innate, what I, I don't want to say demons, but innate um, innate natural phenomena that dictates our behavior, yes. conduct. There you go. Right, uh, which is brought on because of, it's almost your DNA. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in slavery and your, your ancestors and all of them were just beaten and brow. Uh, you know, I speak about it now because we, we always tell people to speak truth to power. But you take a young man who goes to work and he's being mistreated on the job by his supervisor 
Um, he's being dominated and humiliated on the job. Very often he's afraid to speak out because he's taught if you speak out, you probably lose your job. And he fears that. But I don't think that's, just, that's not a natural response. Because if I'm ill treated, I want to be able to speak out, lash out. And so for me, um, what is truly key for us as a people is really to know who we are, understand and have what I call a discerning teaching us how to think, reason, and not just be led by our losers and, and um, and and so, uh, it, symbols are good. The truth is better, right? And one of the challenges we have today is truth is an endangered species. The technology and the fast dissemination of information now. We, we have stopped thinking. And so what I'm hearing from you is, look, we are thinking and we are called upon to think and discern. And look what, let's look at what you are not being. Um, so we, we need to continue to point out things that's not been pointing out. I think well, um, in, 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 in our in our society, our country, we always thought we, we talk about Jesus being a black person, all right? But we have the traditional churches, right. and um, and though we might talk about it, it's not promoted, right? right? We say if he's born in Africa, how could he be white anyhow? I, you know, they don't go to the Bible about it. Just, they just bring their common sense to it and say, well, look, if he's born in this, in this, um, at the equator where it's hot, all that, how could he be a, a white man? Um, but, um, um, this is the first I've heard about your movement and what is grounded in. And, you know, um, and I want to say that the portions of the Bible you pointed out is is compelling argument to to uh, promote the fact that you know we are the chosen race. On, on July tenth, nineteen seventy three, when our when our um, when we got independence from Great Britain got away from the colonial rule of Great Britain, as a Reverend Dr. H. W. Brown said to us, um, we are a particular people. With uh, Reuben Cooper. Cooper. Flag, yes. Okay. We are a particular people. We are the chosen people because we're moving from colonial into being independent. And he, 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 he is Reuben Cooper, Re yeah. Reverend Reuben Cooper. And he spoke to us being that. And that still resonates today, um, but it's still subdued. It still needs to be awakened. Question among the youth out here. Yeah. Well, I could tell you, uh, I have a son who just became a researcher. And he just finished a book called Black Rents mm -hmm. that traces the connection of, of, we have a cultural show. We have something called John Canoe. And he decided just to see the traces origin, which goes back to the Hunter region in Ghana. And he did a, there's a book on it, which really speaks to the 
slave trade and how it got and how the that joke came to the Bahamas, John Canoe, and it and it spread across the Caribbean and South and and in America too. It's a cultural thing. I probably I think I may have one of his book here that I'll present to you with, and um, you'll find you'll find it interesting, I think, and you might find some. I'm oh, sure. A line <laughs> of the very sick. No, Prime Minister, I wanted to tell you, um, being here, our old goal really is outreach. To reach the young men here, to go out into the community where, where the churches really don't go out and meet the people and help change their minds. As you said, you understand there's power in this word. So our, our goal is to change them, and, and this way it'll alleviate the crime here. These are our people. Our people are suffering, and the, the, this youth, uh, they've lost faith in the Bible. They've lost faith in it. But how do we bring them back to it? As the bishop was saying, we explain the truth of this Bible, who they are as being a peculiar people, how you must conduct yourself. There's a disconnect between the youth and the Bible of today. And the only way to reach them is that many of these young men also, we came out of the streets, you know, we're all married, or at least here, most women married men with wives and children. We're law-abiding people. We're not breaking the laws. We, we don't promote violence against anybody. And we're trying to show this, this young youth, there's ways to survive here, but you have to do it godly. And that's where the church has, has lost that disconnect. When we were younger, the church was very influential in the community. Now, the outreach is gone. It's gone. And a lot of it is pushed, and I'm not saying it's all churches, because I don't, it can't speak for anyone. But it's 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 financial based, financial driven. Mm-hmm. For us, we're we're driven by seeing change in lives, right. making these young men into fathers, into husbands, or wives, or women into mothers, into into wives, and that's what that's what compels. That's the reason why we find ourselves. We go to the parts of the countries. We went in Trinidad and Africa, different places where people will not go. India. India. We're in India. We're, we're going to the ghettos and the places. And that's what we want to do here. We want to help support and help these young Because these young men, I was, I was looking at statistics of crime here, and violent crimes. Um, <coughs> we know a lot of it. Uh, uh, I was shocked. It, it seemed worse than some of the cities in the United States. So, so now we're sitting with these men. We sat down. We talked. What well, can be the plan of action? And we wanted to come to you because you're the face of this country. You know, with your support and, and, and young guidance, give us the opportunity to reach these people. We think we can make significant changes. Well, I, I can tell you, um, we're in the middle of our budget um, discussions now, and I, 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 my, I spoke to particularly we don't, young men. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I talk about money. I was just talking about mindset, you yeah, know, okay. resetting mm. the mindset of our people. And, and intervening. Um, we have, I think, a lot of, uh, like you said, the church is an endangered species. They've lost contact. Like you said, when I was growing up, I had, I, my, my mother, my father, they took me to church and they made sure I would go to Sunday school. Right. Um, today, parents might send their, try to send their kids to, school, to church. And and uh, and the church is failing. I'm, 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 the, church failing. failing. the church failing. is failing. The church is failing. Yeah, yeah. and okay. we need to. Um, and I've been racking my head on what we can do to connect our young people mm-hmm. back again today. Um, on the march, a young boy saw me walking, and his mother came over and said, "My son wants to take a picture. He's nine years of age." And he said to me, um, I always wanted to meet you. So I took a picture with him. I said, yes. I said, what's your name? He told me his name, he, what school he goes to. And then he, and I, I said, I'll, try, I'll visit your school one day. So and I kept walking. And about 15 minutes later, he said, could I walk with you? I said, yeah, but where's your mom? You know, I don't want, because when, how you can get back home? He says, no, I just want to. So he goes, you see, my mom could say could, I could walk with you. And he walked with me throughout the whole march. And this, listening to that young boy, a bright young boy, I decided to let's adopt him. 
and talking to him. Uh, what was your mum? I said, and so when he got out here, I, I, I had to speak to the crowd. I spoke and I took him back home. And when I, I, I said, what you have for lunch? I gave him $200. I said, I'll just take this to mum. I don't give my mum this money. I said, but I can't, you, you're nine years old, you just can't keep $200, right? And then I started saying, well, how much brothers you have? I don't remember. So I go to his, I, so I'm dropping him home. So I came out the car because I saw where he was. I saw about four, six men just sitting on the, sitting on the side of the road, some old cars. It's in, we call it a ghetto. So I go outside. His mom, and his mom is right there, and they're living in a little beetle car. She's just telling me, and she has eight, eight children, and, and they were all. I said, "Well, how would you have all these children? It has nothing to do." So I now have to, I've just given instructions to try to find a place for them to stay. I decided I'll take this young boy under my wings, and I had to leave, but. And it's clear that she's telling me how her son was just, one of her sons were killed a couple last year in the front of all the children. And the fellas came back and tried to kill the other son. And this is in Peter Street. Right, and, and, and when you list, look at it, these young, she, she has a little job, we're not paying it enough. And when we do a little look at it, you have these, a lot of these boys are being abused as young children. And the one thing that is showing me is that an abused child is a dangerous adult. So we have to find these interventions, not just even here when they're 14, 15, we have to start at this level as nine. And so, and that's a lesson for me today on that match. And so, um, and when I look, I went to the graduating class, the commencement exercise of Alpha University. Um, last year I went, I was dismayed because they had over 600 persons graduating, right? And over 85% of them were women. It didn't change this year either. So our young men are at risk, they're not, and, that, and that's been troubling me for the last year. So we need, so we need organizations who are gonna sort of focus. It's not just, I, I know we're gonna look at, the females have to be a part, because they're partners, but uh, we have a, a real, a real challenge with our young men. So they become dysfunctional. Um, so they become antisocial as they grow up, and, and so, so I've started a program called the National Youth Guard. I'm taking in into, um, about 100 of them at a time and just teaching them skills and recruiting them and training them to be what I call emergency responders for disasters, at least just doing something. So what I'm hearing from you is truly something we could support. And I would want to say um, I, I will do that. It's just uh, some scenes from Cat Island. Oh, okay. Grow up with. Well, my thank head. you so much. Oh, praises. <coughs> thank you thank so you much. Very much. And sir. I'll send a book out with it. Okay. okay. Uh, Chris Woolster. Chris Woolster, secretary. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. 